My name is Mike Laverick. I, I work for VMware, um, but today I'm not going to talk about any products and I don't have anything to sell to you in terms of software. Whew, you're all so relieved. Um, because what I'm going to talk about today um, really isn't about um, VMware or software or technology, but about you and your career development and what you bring to the VMUG. Um, what I'm going to be talking to you today about is something called feed forward. It's a bit of a, a pun or joke uh, on the word feedback. Yeah. Feedback by definition is something you always get after some process is over. And usually by then it's too late. Um, if you've made a mess of it, then the feedback you're going to get is largely going to be negative. If you've been successful in whatever that you've done, the feedback that you'll get will be positive. Um, but if you've been successful in your endeavors, how useful is feedback when you're just being patted on the shoulder? Well done. Yeah. And if you get feedback when something hasn't gone well, wouldn't it have been better if you'd been given that advice before <laughs> the thing went wrong? Um, so you could at least make it better. Yeah. So um, very often people get feedback um, after doing presentations. And one of the difficulties of, of that is, especially if you're presenting at a VMUG, it may be the only time that you get to do a presentation in a year. Maybe you only do one or two a year. It occurred to me in our industry and probably in this room Many of you have probably made a lot of investment in your technical skills. You will have done training courses and certifications and recertifications and recertifications, probably certified across a whole series of different vendors and technologies. So we make a massive investment in our technical skills in, in the kind of VMUG audience. But how much investment do you make in your personal skills? in your social skills, in your ability to communicate to others. Aren't those skills as equally important to your career as Power CLI commands or knowing vCloud Automation Center or Veeam Backup? Yep. So um, Feed Forward, in a nutshell, is a mentoring program where people such as myself will freely give their time to you if you're intending or want to do a presentation at the next VMUG. You can see speaking at a VMUG a bit like an apprenticeship. I don't know whether that translates, but it's a great platform for people like yourselves to stand up into a relatively small group of people and practice doing what I'm doing right now, which is speaking to an audience, but in a room of peers who all want you to do well, and with support through the Feed Forward program, somebody like myself, for example, looking at your content and helping you prepare and be ready to do your presentation. So not Feed Back, which is useless, but Feed Forward, which is us helping you. I'd like to see this program adopted across all the VMUGs worldwide. I always like to set my uh, heights low. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, every VMUG across the globe will have one individual who can be approached to offer this sort of mentoring. Yeah, but That's what my session is about, about today. Um, it may be the most important session that you attend today, he said grandiosely, because uh, if you choose to volunteer and if you choose to become a member and present, that could open up a brand new vista in your whole career, which learning about a technology may not do so, yeah? because it's about you as a person. Um, so I'm here today to speak about this, um, you know, this program, but I want to talk about a little bit about what the VMUG has meant to me uh, to give you an idea of how it can affect your career. Um, I don't think I would be stood on the stage, or sat on the stage, um, 
today without the VMUG. Um, when I got started, uh, I was an instructor to begin with, teaching training courses. And uh, I wrote a, a few guides and put them away for free on my, my website. And I was asked by the London VMUG to come down and present uh, to the people there. And from that, I started to present more and more at VMUGs, not just ones in the UK. I started going to the US and speaking at very large events with 300, 400, 500 people at the events, sometimes more. I'd never spoken to an audience that large before. I mean, in this room, I can at least see the eyeballs of the people at the back. Yeah. Um, but when you're speaking to 500 people, 600 people, it becomes you know, just a wall of faces. Um, but I think, I don't think I would have been able to have done the 500, 600 if I hadn't started off with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It just becomes more people, yeah? Um, and it was through doing those events in the US that I became more well known to people at VMware. And that's how I became to be in the role I, I am currently, which is VMware's senior cloud infrastructure evangelist. Everybody at VMware must have at least four words in their job title. Yes, I've got my four word job title just like everybody else has. So thank you, um, not just to the VMUG, but people like yourselves who visited my old website and one of the early websites around virtualization and that helped my star rise and that's why I'm here. Um, but I'm not the greatest public speaker in the world. Despite having that role, it's something I've grown into and learned over my career. Uh, I didn't come out of the, my mum's womb uh, as VMware's cloud infrastructure evangelist. It doesn't happen that way. The other thing I would say um, as a kind of preface to this session is I'd like you to think about um, the people who are in the VMUG leadership. Uh, people like PJ and others who you saw speak today. Um, they um, devote a lot of time to make this event happen. Obviously, with the large national event, they are helped by the global VMUG, but the backbone of this organization is the fairly regular meetings that people have monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly. They do that for free. Um, they invest a lot of time. I don't want to give you a big, long list of things, but I sat and worked out as a former VMUG leader what I was doing. And so I guess my question or what I'm trying to preface here is, if the VMUG leaders are doing all of this for free, what do you bring to the VMUG? What do you do? I mean, your attendance is, is, is very welcome. I'm really pleased that you're here today, and I'm really pleased you came to my session because it would be quite weird if there was only one person here, me presenting on a stage. But um, I want you to ask yourself the question, what it is that you bring to the, the user group? Do you attend every quarter and, and sit there with your arms folded, watching the vendors present and, you know, waiting for them to impress you? you know? Do you sit there with your hand on your chin, looking at these people? Um, what is it that you bring to the user group? What could you bring in terms of a more interactive, more active kind of approach than simply being a member of the audience, yeah? Um, this picture here is a chap uh, holding a VMUG award. I've got one. It's amazing what they can do with laminated plastic nowadays, you know. Um, but the reason he's got a big smile on his face is that he's getting some recognition for the work he's done. His name is Alaric Davies. He's the chair of the London VMUG. And um, when I was a member of that VMUG as in the leadership, we lost our two founders within two or three months, very quickly, unexpectedly. One went to Australia, one went to Houston, and we were adrift. It was Alaric who stepped up to the plate and offered to become our chair and drove that group going forward to be the success it is now. Um, he's a good symbol for me as somebody who has given his own free time for the good of people like yourselves, albeit in a different country. Yeah. So ask yourself, is there something you could be doing yeah, beyond just attending? Yeah. My goal is if today I can persuade one person to volunteer to do a presentation at the next VMUG, or if I can persuade one person to be this group's mentor, my time here these last couple of days has been totally worthwhile.
So I'm not looking for a great surge of people, just one or two. Yeah? Anything more than that, I'm happy with. Yeah. So there comes this point at the end of every VMUG. I, you'll see it at the end of today. Um, the sponsors will be thanked. The prizes will be given out. Of course, the prizes are there to make sure you stay till the very end because you hope you might win an iPad or a, a Kindle or something like it. And then they'll look out to the audience and they'll say to people, um, at our next meeting, we'd like to have somebody who really uses these technologies in the real world come up and talk about their real experiences, both good and bad, about their technology. And suddenly, everyone starts to be a lot more interested in the ceiling than they were before and a lot more interested in their, their shoes and what's on the floor. Suddenly, the eye contact goes right down. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Yeah? Um, and we really need to get away from that kind of disengagement. Yeah? There's a bit of a cliche, a myth, that all IT people are really quite nerdy and don't like talking to people at all. A bit like Mr. Bean. Do you know Mr. Bean? Uh -huh. hmm. I feel better with a computer and don't like talking to people. Yeah? The, the funny thing about that cliche and myth is for it to be a cliche, there has to be a slither of truth in that stereotype for people to laugh and recognize it. But at the same token, it is a stereotype. It isn't really people like you. Yeah? Yeah. We are actually, I think, amongst the IT community, some of the most articulate people, some of the most passionate people, the, the arguments we have e about with each other, about this technology or this company, were very vocal in certain circumstances. It's just the getting on stage bit that we seem to struggle with. Yeah? And that's, I was discussing this with uh, Duncan Epping and Scott Lowe, who were here last year. Um, last year at the Milan VMUG, there wasn't one session that was presented by somebody from the membership. It was people like me, and I now work for a vendor. I'm no longer independent, so you can't count me anymore as the token person who isn't with any vendor. It was VMware, and it was the vendors. And I said to somebody, we're kind of missing something here because it's called a VMware user group, not VMware vendor bash to try and sell you products. Yeah? So I would say to you, if, you know, it's nice to have these big events and lots of sponsors and free coffee and free food, but we mustn't lose sight of the user aspect of what these events are meant to be about. If it's just vendors pushing their wares, then where's the user group part of this? Yeah? And so both me and Scott and Duncan started to think about why is it it's such a struggle for the VMUG leaders to get people to step forward. Yeah? So whenever I speak to people, usually offline, you know, I might get chatting to one of you a bit later, we'll get talking about one of your projects. Maybe you asked me a question about VDI or vCloud Director or whatever. And uh, the more I talk to you as an individual, the more I'll be thinking, you know, this would be a great session at the VMUG. So uh, not wanting to miss out an opportunity, I'll say, uh, you know, have you thought about presenting this at a VMUG, the next event? And then the look of fear and horror. Uh, oh no, I thought I was asking you questions, hoping to get support from you. Now you're asking me to do something. I didn't realize that was the nature of this engagement. Yeah? Hello. <laughs> it's always two-way. Yeah? You make a demand of me, I'm going to make a demand of you and ask you whether you can do something. Yeah? Otherwise, what's in it for me? I ask people, why could they not present? So uh, very often people will say, well, my manager would never approve it. That's a good excuse. Ah, oh, well, you know, my manager, he would never, he, he wouldn't allow us to talk about all our IP addresses and host names and the intricate detail of our configuration. My answer to that is we're not looking for that. We're looking to know what's good and bad about your experiences of a particular technology or project. You know what people are really looking for when they uh, hear a community member speak is what went wrong and how they fixed it because that's the nature of our work, isn't it? A glowing story about how everything worked and it was wonderful is the most boring thing on the planet, isn't it? But somebody going, we had this problem and this problem and this didn't work, 
and this is how we overcome it, is what people really want to hear. They want to know the truth about the experience. Not because they want to use it to dismiss the technology, but they want to avoid the same mistakes that others have made. You know. So I think, is, I think is a way of talking about a particular project, proof of concept, or something went in production, without even mentioning the company name. So when members at the London VMUG present, a lot of them will say, I work for a large financial institution in the city. Well, you know, London is full of large financial institutions. And yes, I could look at that person's name on LinkedIn and find out who that company is if I wanted to, as long as I, you know, friended him. But it, it's something about not mentioning that name publicly. It then becomes vanilla. It could be any company. You, know, you could make it up. You know, I work for widgets.com. Yeah. Another thing people say is um, it's political. You know, oh, um, it, it's not a, a positive story of everything that I did with VMware. We don't want that. We want the good and the bad. Hopefully you can turn the bad into we had this problem uh, because I work for such a great company, we overcome that challenge. You know, like Americans sometimes do, you know, they sort of overcome. So the other thing that people say is no one would be interested in, in, in my small little environment. I only have about 300 ESX hosts and run about 6,000 VMs. It's a really, really tiny little environment. Yeah? Making a joke, of course. Small is always relative. You know, your environment is large to somebody else. Depends how big their environment is. But what I would say to counter that is more than 50% of the people who attend a local VMUG work for a small to medium sized company, not a massive, massive enterprise. Um, because VMUGs offer small to medium sized businesses an opportunity to attend an event which is free, which is usually pretty local, yeah? uh, gets them to meet contractors and consultants and other vendors in an informal environment. So, you know, just because you work for a small organization, whatever that might be, people will still be interested in what you have to say. People will find me boring. <laughs> Literally, somebody said this to me. You, I, you know, somebody was telling me about their idea for, you know, and I said, this could be a great, oh, people will find me boring. I went, okay, bye. <laughs> of course we won't find you boring. Um, if you're a geek, I mean, like, uh, um, um, this morning it was said, you know, technical people get it. So you don't have to be the most charismatic, sparkling character. If your content is interesting, people will lap it up. Yeah? You don't have to be a fantastic presenter. If your content is lousy, then you have to be a fantastic presenter. Because you have to make up for all the emptiness in your content. Yeah? So what are the real reasons that people don't step forward? If those are excuses, what are the real reasons? Well, the real reason, I think, is confidence. Yeah? Standing up on stage means everyone is hanging on every word that you're saying. Literally, as it spills out your mouth, even if you don't know what's coming next, they are listening to every single word that you're saying. A little bit of a postmodern moment there. A bit weird. He's talking about talking. What will he say next? Yeah, But it's a confidence thing. Um, if you know your subject well, you'll be surprised how easy that will come to you. Yeah, If you've got important things that you know everything about, yeah, it's very easy to be confident. People get nervous. People think that the audience is sat there like a bunch of juries or judges waiting to... Have you executed the moment you say something? No, they're not. They're not. Especially when it's somebody from your community speaking to the community. What I've noticed is that people are willing their best friend or their associate or colleague to do well. Um, in fact, to a degree, they sometimes are not as critical. If you're VMware, if you're Trend Micro, then you're under scrutiny. Your job when you come to a VMUG and you see a vendor present is to look for all the gaps, the things they don't tell you, and then ask questions about those gaps and test that presenter to see whether A, he's telling the truth, or B, he's prepared to give you some additional information beyond what the vendor 
has decreed. Yeah? But when it comes to community members, it's a much more supportive environment. People worry that there will be difficult questions they don't know the answer to. Um, as an instructor, previously, I did 17 years of being in front of people, 12 at max, over a five-day period, that could ask me any question that they liked. They've got 12 brains, I only have one. So I took it as a matter of attitude that it was inevitable that I would be asked a question I did not know the answer to. Yeah, it's just inevitable. Accept it. Yeah. The best way of handling a question you don't know the answer to is to say, I don't know the answer to that question. You'd be surprised how people will be relieved that you've been honest with them. Rather than, for want of a better word, bullshitting them. Yes. Ah, well, uh, you see, uh, what will happen in that situation is um, from an end-to-end uh, continuation of, of technology, the verbal diarrhea goes up. The more the person doesn't have an answer to the question, they start to flim-flam. So I learned just to say, you know what, I haven't got a clue. And students used to look at me and go, but you're the instructor, you should know the answer to everything. I was like, Ooh. What a weird kind of perspective I have on the world. I am the repository of all knowledge. I know everything. What I would do is go out and look it up. Yeah? The next week, somebody else would ask me that same question. The answer would be there. And people would think, God, this man's a genius. He knows everything. <laughs> the, only, the only thing is I didn't know it last week. Yeah? I think that's one of the difficult things of doing presentations like this, where you don't get regular questions and you're not doing it over and over again. It's sometimes you're going in blind. Feed forward can help with that because when I do mentoring with somebody who's going to do a presentation, I ask them loads of questions. Sometimes because I don't know the answer. Sometimes I do. But what I want to do is put you in the position where you have to answer it. That gives that person such a boost of confidence because they think I can stand up in front of an audience and anything they throw at me, I know the answer to it because they get such a grilling from me, then they're pre-prepared. So it's obvious that you need, if you're going to do a presentation at a that you need support. Feedback afterwards is of no use, but in order to get rid of confidence, questions, make you feel more confident, stop you feeling nervous, make you feel like you can handle questions, you need some sort of support and mentoring beforehand. And that's what Feed Forward is all about. Hashtag is feed forward. Yeah. Um, I wrote an article for the VMUG Voice all about this concept. It's been adopted by the VMUG bodies in the US. And there is a sign up page, which I'll tell you about later, for those people who want to present, those people who want to mentor. So it's, it's kind of changing from being me and the guys, Duncan and Scott Lowe and others, saying this would be a good idea, to it becoming something that's a little bit more official. But the support is between us as a community. Um, we haven't employed a team of presenters from the US armed with mics as if they are motivational speakers. Yeah? It's just us helping out. I've had some early wins. Uh, so uh, Frank brick Peterson, who's here today, he works at Pernix Data. Uh, he signed up to be a mentor. Um, the reason he wanted to do it, as he put it, is he wanted to bring the you back into the user group. Bit of a pun, you and user group, bring you into the group, but be about users. He helped mentor a colleague of his called Rasmus Hadland. Yeah, uh, very long quote, I know, but I picked out what was important to me. Uh, I truly believe my session was many times better than it would have been than if he'd not gone through the process to, at all. Somebody I mentored, a chap in the UK called Nick Fernell, um, he had a, a very interesting story about his use of nimble storage. And um, basically, they had an array in his business that was dying, and they literally just needed some storage anyway. And he'd seen Nimble at a VMUG event. Nimble actually saw his tweet and offered him an array you know, to deal with his problem, a storage array. Uh, obviously not for free, but no charge, and you could return it if you didn't want it or use it. Yeah? Uh, it's a good example now of the modern way that people have problems, people see the problem, and that turns into a business opportunity and a solution, all through the power of VMUG and Twitter. Yeah? 
But here's his quote. The approach really clarified my own thinking, and the fact that we wandered in and around the subject matter uh, prepared me for a typical audience heckler. My confidence grew. In fact, what I should do with this PowerPoint slide is just highlight the word, my confidence grew. Because you'll see it in all the other ones as well. Yeah? So another guy I helped mentor, a guy called Alex Galbraith. Um, having a second pair of eyes on my slide and presentation from somebody who does this in all day gave me the confidence yeah, that the content was up for par. It was this that started me to think that really the process of mentoring it isn't really about looking at the content at all. It isn't really about the questions. It's simply somebody looking at what you're about to present and going, you don't really need that slide, and that could be before then, but pretty much I think you've got a good presentation. It's the confidence boost that people get from it because they've already gone through it with somebody else. Yeah. Another chap I helped mentor, error in my PowerPoint slide, He's not called Alex Galbraith. I'm sure there's more than one. I need to edit that. Um, this chap approached me on Twitter saying he wanted me to have a look at his uh, presentation. And I said, sure, because that's the kind of guy I am. And we did, uh, I think, two hours worth of WebEx in two different sessions. It was only um, five or ten minutes into the session that I found out that he was actually a VMware employee. Because <laughs> I, I didn't say in his Twitter that he worked for VMware, so I just thought he was some guy. Um, but I went through his presentation, which was all about his home lab. Um, feed forward is very valuable. It helped with my confidence, there's that word again, with my presentation. So it's all about confidence, really. Although I think all the other things that we do when we do mentoring, looking at the structure, do you have too many bullet points? Um, are you repeating yourself? Are you taking too long in your introduction and not getting to the heart of the matter? All those things help, but it's really the confidence boost that I think that people get from it. Um, a guy from uh, Benelux area, uh, very uh, popular on Twitter, Hans Dilemina. Um, he's offered to be a mentor. Um, someone covering your back is worth a lot more than a blog post with tips and tricks. I promise we will do everything in our power to help you thrive. So here are people, it's that process again, who want to freely give their time to you in order to help you do something that you feel I don't feel very confident with for free, for nothing, just like the VMUG leaders do. Yeah? So you're surrounded by these people who are willing to give their free time, their expertise, their knowledge, their experience in order to help you for nothing. How often does that happen in life? Very rarely. Normally there's a quid pro quo, isn't there? There's something that that person wants in, in exchange. We're doing this for nothing. Yeah? I personally think that if you're going to base your career purely on technical knowledge and the ability to be the most uber geek person in your organization, you will have a future. Yeah? But what if you're number two or number three or number four? You're not uber geek. Yeah? What's going to differentiate you? Is it going to be just your technical skills at all? Or is it going to be the way you can communicate to the business, communicate to different stakeholders, persuade, cajole, make people change their opinions from X to Y to make a project happen? It's these sorts of soft skills you learn when you're doing presentations because you have to convince people. Well, that's what I'm doing here, isn't it? I'm trying to convince you, or someone here, to present at the next VMUG. And the way I'm trying to do that is with all my armory, but also backed by this program to try and support people. To try and get away or rid of all the excuses and the naysaying, oh, well, we could never do this because of X, Y, and Z. And put those away so there are no barriers. So how do you get feed forward? Um, you could speak to your local VMUG leader and ask them whether they've got a mentor yet. If not, they should do. Maybe they'll turn around to you and say, why don't you be the mentor? <laughs> um, if you've got more general inquiries, uh, we have a hashtag, which is hashtag feed forward for, the, for Twitter. We also have a Twitter account called at feed forward. Of course, you can always contact me 
or any of the other people who I've mentioned who are sort of doing this as a community issue. We now have a landing page on the VMUG uh, website, vmug.com slash feed forward. In there, you can sign up and say, tick, I would like to be a mentor. Tick, I would like to present at the next VMUG. Tick, I'd like to help with the program, with the initiative. So you can um, contribute to Feed Forward in many different ways. Um, you can even contribute by not presenting and not being a mentor. <laughs> if you can think that's a little bit crazy, a thing that's all about getting people to present, about mentoring them. And finally, some tips and advice about doing what I'm doing here, yeah, about being a presenter. Um, if the video camera hadn't have been running, I would have probably not stayed on the stage as much. Can you still see me? Yeah, And I would have come down more into the audience. Can you see how that changes the relationship between me and you instantaneously? Yeah, in fact, I should have done it at the very beginning. If you can do a presentation where you are wandering around, you can go right to the back of the person of the room who's obviously trying to get as far away from being plucked out by the comedian or whatever, and you can speak to them directly, catch them in the eye. The hardest thing, I think, when you do presentations is to be yourself. And there's something really weird about being on that stage. Suddenly, be, you become someone else. Oops, that wasn't meant to happen. It stops you from being who you are. It stops the personal side of you happening. Yeah? Um, there is this tendency that people become a kind of, this is how people present. In fact, actually walking around the audience becomes a little presentation technique because people have to follow you and watch your eyes. Yeah? It tells you whether they're paying any attention to what you're saying. Because when you're stood in the audience and in front of a PowerPoint screen, do you know what they're looking at? Are they looking at you? Are they looking at the PowerPoint? Are they looking at the speakers? What are they looking at? I'm making the cameraman work for his money today, aren't I? So try and be yourself. It's the hardest thing to do because there's nothing more abnormal than um, being the center of attention and having 20 or 30 people all looking at you simultaneously. It instantaneously makes the feeling of self-consciousness uh, um, more than it would be normally. Because in the audience, you're just uh, another person in the group. You know? You could hide away. No one can see you. Yes? No, 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 no. One of my jobs as a former instructor is if I had 12 people in the room, I had to identify the 11th person who never asked a question, never asked a, uh, for help in a lab, never said anything all wink. Because that person who didn't speak to me at all was dark. I had no idea whether he was loving every minute of the training course or whether he was hating every moment. And so at the end of the week, I'd be like, well, I think 10 of the guys really enjoyed it. This 11th guy, he shouldn't have been there. He knew it already. And this 12th guy, I have no clue whatsoever whether he hated every moment or enjoyed the experience. And that's actually quite unnerving. Yeah? So I would, my job with a smaller group was to identify that person and try and tease them out, even if it meant sitting down with them at break time and just speaking to them individually. Yeah. Self-depreciation goes a long way. Nobody particularly likes it in life when somebody stands up on a stage and says, everything I know, oops, watch what you do with your hand, everything I know is perfect and I'm perfect, I know everything, nobody can teach me anything. So being able to laugh at yourself, make a joke at your ex own expense, it helps stop this being a barrier and merely being a platform for you getting a message across. Yeah? That's the idea of the stage, it's so you can see me and I can see you, but the trouble is, is that sometimes that stage gets in the way of making that connection with people. Make a joke. Um, the reason making, and the jokes can be lousy, by the way, they don't have to be good jokes, they can be terrible jokes, yeah? Um, but it does show at least that the audience isn't dead, yeah? So if you can make somebody laugh, or even smile a little, then you know that they're, they're not dead. And you can rest assured that your audience isn't like in a comatose state. Yeah, um, I used to um, ask people questions uh, in my training courses, and go, I'd, I'd, I'd say something, and I'd go, any questions, and I'd get absolute silence. 
And I'd say, any questions? Absolute silence. And then I'd just look at them like that. <laughs> you know, are we still here? Hello? And people would laugh. Oddly enough, once they laughed, then a question would come out. But there was something about they'd entered this kind of... I don't know whether, whether the reason they went into the cataclysmic state, which was I was so boring, or every word was so important, they had to absolutely concentrate on every word in case they missed something. It was probably one of the two. Demos. If you are intending to do a VMUG presentation and you want to demo something, that's great. Ask yourself one question. Does the demo really add to what you're having to say? Or does it merely reinforce what you've said already? Or does it even detract? If you are going to do demos at a VMUG, then what you need to do the night before or on the morning is find a small goat, or any animal will do, preferably not cats and dogs because I like them, you know, and then sacrifice the goat to the gods of demos who look down on all presenters. Yeah? And uh, the gods of demos basically have a set of dice, which basically means not only if you practice that demo 10 times, the 11th time you do it when other people are watching is when it will go wrong. In fact, there's a special law of physics that dictates when people are watching you, it doesn't work. But when people look away, suddenly it does. Your eyes actually influence the outcome of the... I'm joking, of course. So you, you've got to ask yourself the question, does the demo really work and add something? Given the risk, it can all go horribly wrong. Yeah? I used to do a lot of demos as an instructor, but I'd have five days to do demos at the right point and whether it was relevant or not. If it went wrong, I'd go... <clears throat> And I said, let's move on, and I'd do something else. And then I'd come back to that demo once I'd worked out the problem. Ironically, as an instructor, I had one of my students said to me that the fact that all week all my demos had gone wrong had actually been a really great learning experience because he saw something that was pre-canned and was meant to work seamlessly go wrong, and then he watched me fix it. He learned more about me fixing the demo than he did from the demo. So, you know, but I guess that's kind of what we do. You know, nobody calls us when it all works. They call us when it's broken, don't they? Um, enjoy the experience. You might find you actually enjoy it, you know. It, it, it's kind of weirdly addictive. You know, if you're a bit of an egomaniac like I clearly am, you know. You know I need my monthly, weekly dose of people hanging on every word. It makes you feel all self-important and wonderful. But you might actually quite enjoy it, especially if you've got something that is interesting that people want to say or hear about. Finally, before I finish up, I'd like to thank my mentor. Um, it occurred to me that if I was going to promote this initiative program of mentoring, my own presentation, this thing that you're looking at, should actually go through a mentoring process. Yeah? Otherwise, I'd be, I don't want to say a liar, but it'd be, uh, I'd be saying, well, I don't really need it. You need it because you're rubbish. But me, the god of presentation, doesn't need any uh, mentoring. Wrong. That's an arrogant, uh, conceited uh, view that I'm somehow above others. And I don't like that at all. Yeah? So Hans had a look through this presentation. <laughs> and as I was doing it, I realized where it was wrong. It started off with my view of the VMUG and how I got involved in the VMUG and when I did my first presentation and what that presentation, it was all about me. It was a big, long intro, and then I had 10 minutes left to say, and this is what feed forward is. So um, I wasn't getting to the subject, and I ditched that long introduction for just um, what's the VMUG done for me and why I think it's important, one slide, and got to the heart of the matter. I then asked my question, myself that question, why did I have such a long introduction? And like the actual thing I was talking about was only five or ten minutes. And I began to realize that my introduction was actually a comfort blanket. It was something that made me feel comfortable, that I could talk about something I knew well my, my various labs and, you know, but it really wasn't about my subject. It was about me, you know. Um, and so I, I guess there's something to be got from that. When you're doing a presentation, there's sometimes the tendency to select subjects and topics 
that make you feel comfortable. And maybe you don't get to the point quick enough. So one of the most popular presentations that community members do to the VMUG is my home lab. Yeah, every VMUG I go to, my home lab. It's like, oh, one more home lab. Here we go. <laughs> my wife doesn't like it. Yeah, the, the power's a lot over. I don't have the space. You hear the same story over and over again. I wonder if the reason why people pick that is because it's safe. Makes them feel comfortable. It's about my environment that's specific to me that nobody else knows about. Uh, therefore, I can't be questioned on it. But it's a bit of a safe option. So if you want to do a presentation about your home lab, great, that's fine. But don't make it into a comfort blanket. Make it into something else other than, oh, then I bought some network cards, but they didn't work. But I updated the firmware, and then they did work. You know, Say something else about home labs that maybe somebody else hasn't heard before. Yeah. OK. Well, it's that point at the end of the session. Do we have any volunteers? Oh, suddenly, I'm looking at the ceiling. I'm looking at my shoes again. Um, is there anybody here who has an idea of a session that they may like to do at the next VMUG? We've got one person here. Do we have any others? Don't be shy. Anybody uh, interested in being a mentor? Helping. Oh, by the way, you know the mentoring thing? You can be the worst presenter on the planet and still be a good mentor. Because what makes a good mentor isn't being a good presenter. It's being a good audience. So if you've sat through loads and loads of really boring presentations and you've seen one or two really good ones, that will make you a good mentor because you'll be able to spot boring very quickly and stop the person you're mentoring from being boring. And if you've seen a good presentation, you'll know what to draw out. So you yourself could be the most shy, I don't like presenting person on the planet, but you can still be a good mentor. It's simply the act of somebody else looking at somebody else's content. It gives you a different perspective at both the presenter and the mentor. OK, well, I managed to get one person to stick his hands up, so it's a success. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. <laughs>